Hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to be killing Tomato Row, which is something we talked about for quite some time. Um, I'm going to be putting in a cover crop. But before I get into that process, I'm going to show you. I have some awesome tomatoes that I have harvested already. So those will be going out to friends and family. If they make it that far, we might be eating them all now. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is getting all the tomatoes. Those I'll be throwing out with the yard waste bags because, again, I don't want to compost them and then have seeds come up throughout the compost for next year. And then the rest of it, I'm going to be cutting even because I want to leave the roots in the ground. So I'm going to get started on this and then I will show you what it looks like before and after. So you can see here, this is where I get all of my basil from for our cut flowers that we've shown here. So I've got some marigolds, there's some geraniums and petunias, and I think I did some radishes down there, and then all of the tomatoes that are growing up on these stakes that I made here on the fence. So all of this is going to be coming out today, and I'll be taking, I've got pine straw down here, that'll be coming out and going into the compost. While we're here, let's see if I have a radish. Yeah, a little one, it's fun. But all of this is going to be coming out and this will be cover crop and the whole purpose of doing a cover crop again i think i've talked about how you know this is fresh topsoil um, we're going to need something here that will give back some nutrients so that is the purpose that it gives back the nutrients to the soil so it'll have an even better crop next year Okay, it is all done. I'm a little hot and sweaty, but again, what I just did is I cut all the tomatoes down level with the ground, leaving the roots in the system um, and all the soil. And I cut all the petunias, those geraniums, and marigolds, cut them all flush to the ground. Um, and the whole reason I'm doing this is to leave the roots in the soil so that over time they break down and give more organic matter into this brand new topsoil that didn't have anything in it before. Um, so then what I did is I, I roughly raked up the top just to break up the surface. I didn't want to dig around. Um, that way I can put my seeds down. So I have a big old bag of cover crop. So what is a cover crop? The one I chose is called the Garden Cover Crop Mix. It's got quite a bit of stuff in here. So this has wheat seed, peas, daikon radish, which will help kind of dig down way into the ground, forage collards, some vetch yellow mustard, and then two types of clover. So you can kind of see all the seeds in here, all different sizes, some big, some small. Um, you can see that. Kind of, there's some big ones in here. Um, but anyways, this will get going. So um, what my hope is that this all gets um, germinated and growing, and then I can go ahead and terminate the cover crop, which means either you cut it down even, just like what I did here, and that it should kill it off, or I can even crimp it and push it over and then that way it'll compost in place, providing even more organic matter into the soil. I did a test of this um, just to kind of see how it did with surface sowing. And I did it in the greenhouse. So I'm going to show you um, about a two week old crop of this exact mix, which is here. So it's just a lot of green. You can tell what the wheat is. You can tell what some of the peas are. Um, and a lot of these are nitrogen fixers, so it's going to take nitrogen from the air and make it accessible to the roots of the next crop that I'll be putting in here. Which, if you remember, will be a lot of cut flowers, so a lot of the zinnias, maybe some dahlias um, over here on this side of the, the garden. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw some seeds out. So there's no real rhyme or reason to this. Um, I don't need this to be like perfectly even, so I'm just going to use... Trust the old hands and just spread it out really nice and um, thick because remember there's a lot of different varieties in here. I want to make sure that there is good coverage all the way throughout. I don't know if you've ever put your hand in like a bag of seeds, which I guess I hadn't before this, or into something um, that's like that. The texture is just so fun to play with. I'm trying not to get into, behind um, the last board and the fence, I just have some mulch to help with the weeds. I don't really want a whole cover crop growing up in between there either. You'll see some of the green things that are still in the bed. I did leave some radishes that I was growing in here because I figured that would break down just fine. 
um, and become more nutrients. So I did leave some of that. So I've got it all placed down. I still have another bed that's behind us to do. And then I'm just gonna lightly rake this in. I'm actually gonna go over backwards with the rake. And all I'm trying to do is give this some contact with the ground. And then I'm gonna water it in really well. But this will just help us stick. Okay, you can still see there's a lot of seeds exposed and that is gonna be just fine. Um, I don't think these seeds are really gonna be something that the birds want. Um, if so, there's enough down there for everyone. Um, and then I'm just gonna water in really well and we'll have an update here soon on what the cover crop has done. You know we can't end the video without making a bouquet, right? It's been kind of my thing lately. Um, so I didn't worry with picking all the flowers, I just have a bunch of zinnias and that lemon balm and some status. So let's just pull it together and see. Um, but I do have some really great yellow status that is ready. Um, I'm gonna kind of make this my center filler piece that I like to do. Um, and then I'm gonna do, let's see, let's do some of the purples in there. Oh, I just love, remember that Queen Lime series? So we're gonna throw that around on every side got quite a few zinnias to work with today. I'm going to throw a couple of these. These are that candy cane mix zinnia. Come out with those stripes. So these ones are mainly white. I think that'll be nice throughout. I've got two of those. I'm going to go ahead and throw in some Philip flowers, so that's the lemon balm that we've had before. That smells so good. Okay, now let's do some of our queen lime, the actual lime. Look at how those all look together. Blush and the queen lime. Love it. Okay. And throw a couple of just regular purples on some portions of them. Another one of those really pretty queen lime series. I think it's queen lime red. This is kind of fun. I had some leftover um, dill. Sorry, bugs are all over me. Um, I'm just going to add that in because when it flowers, it's got a little bit of yellow flower. And just for, it'll be hidden, you'll barely see it. Just so that pops out. Okay. Then I've got, look at the status. It has got white, but it's just got a little bit of the purple in the center. And that is going to pull everything together so nicely on this. Oh, I lost my... I lost my candy cane mix. Let's pull him up a little bit. There we go. Can't hide that one. And I'm just gonna finish it off with some of the sweet mint. Give it some airiness on the outsides, make it a little bit more full. And we'll go here. That is super good looking. Just got the yellows and the reds. It's really kind of formal looking compared to some of the other ones I've done. Okay, it's rubber band time. Oh no, it's not. I've got to cut the things <laughs> to make them even. Do my test and see if I can get this one right. That's perfect. 
Oh, well, thanks. What a day. I am a sweaty mess. It's still a little long. That's okay. Hopefully the next one will have some germination updates for the cover crops that we just planted. And that'll just make next year's bouquets that much better. Well, thanks for joining me again. We'll see you next time. Take care.